Everybody, Heather here. So today we are going to be working on our June 2013 watercoloring monthly card kit. And this month I've chose one of these cute little Stampin' Bella images called Claudia Has a Candy. Which is really cute. And if you want to see if this kit's still available, if you're watching this later on, just head over to the store and I'll put a link down in the description. And just type in Claudia Has a Candy in the little search bar at the top of the store and it will pop up if it's available. If not, check out this month's kit. So I've already stamped my image on um, Canson 140 pound watercolor paper with Ranger Archival ink. Let's color! Okay, also I should probably mention that this stamp right here is really large in the front of her dress. And so I had to stamp this a couple times because I got ink in there and then had to re-stamp it. So you want to be careful when you're stamping yours before you do it on your regular cardstock. Maybe practice a couple times or wipe off the inside with a Q-tip or however you want to do it just so you don't get the ink inside of her dress. But it is pretty big so it, I made a mistake and stamped mine in there. So I've got my ink palette here. And I've got a couple of water brushes. And I've got my trusty, crusty paper towel so I can wipe those off. And I'm going to start by outlining our image. So I'm going to pop open my ink palette. And for that, I'm going to use the medium detail brush, or the medium water brush, not the detail one. And I'm going to give it a little squeeze. And then I'm going to wipe it on the back of my hand to make sure it's damp. And it's perfect. So I'm going to grab me a little bit of antique linen on my brush. Let me turn my palette here just a little bit. Because it seems like my ink is all down in the corner. So let me turn it completely around so I can reach it. So I'm going to start by outlining my image. And I'm going to do that first this time just so I don't accidentally get any um, later on. Touch the dress and pull it away. It'll just be easier this way. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that on my brush. And I'm going to start down here on her leg, just to make it easiest. So I'm going to start down here, and I'm just going to rub a little bit of that down like that. And then I'm going to wipe my excess off of my brush. And I'm going to come back with just the water on my brush and pull that away from her body out here towards the stick just until it fades out here in the middle to nothing. Then I'm going to refill my brush, so I'm going to grab a little bit more ink, and I'm going to do this side of the stick, just so I can let that other side dry a little bit, and maybe a little bit underneath of her little lace on her dress there. And then same thing, I'll wipe my brush off, and then I'm going to come back with just water and pull that away until it becomes nothing out here. Okay, so let's continue all the way around. So grab more ink on your brush, and I'm going to go up here, Oops. let's go right up here towards this cute little popsicle or lollipop here, and then come back after I've wiped my brush off, and spread that away from her body. Okay, and there's still quite a bit there, so I'm going to wipe my brush off again, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to pull my brush even further out here so that it's fading into nothing out here. Okay, I'm going to grab you some more. And you're going to work your way around this little lollipop here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then pull that ink away. And we're going to do this side around our lollipop stick. And I also dabbed a little bit inside that little um, inside of the bow there. And I think I'll grab a little bit here in between her arm where there is um, space there. And then again we're going to wipe our brush off and come back with just the water and flick that line away. And as long as it's not too dark in between the bow there and between her arm, which I have, I waited till my brush was almost empty before I wiped it in there, I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to grab some new ink. And go up here, go along her arm. And when you first lay it down, it does look kind of a green color, but if you don't get too crazy with it, 
put too much, when you wipe it away, it turns a nice, pretty, light yellow. It reminds me of like a candle casting a shadow. The light you get off a candle at night. Okay, it's looking good. Okay, so we're going to continue around. Let's go up here and we'll do around her head. Come back around here to her little neck. Okay, and again I wipe my brush off. And you come back with just your water and spread that out. And if your brush, brush starts to get dry, you want to give it a little squeeze. And let's continue down this side of her dress. Okay, my brush is almost out, so I'm going to go ahead and dab a little bit right here in that little spot where her arm is. And wipe down. Wipe my brush off again. I'm going to come back and spread that line just a little bit further. Oops, and I got a little bit on her dress, so I'm going to wipe that off. Okay, we'll grab some more. Let's go down here and continue down until we get to the bottom of her foot. And then spread that out. And we want to get in between her legs too, so let's go ahead and grab some new ink. And we're just going to, since there's such a small area, I'm going to do both sides. And wipe my brush off and then come back and just lightly brush over the edge of the, those lines and spread it towards the middle. And then we also want to do this side of the stick since we didn't do it last time. So I'm going to go down this side the stick and wipe that out this way. And that takes us all the way around our girl. So let's also go down here and if your image is dry you can add something a little something for her to stand on and for that I'm going to use walnut stain. So let me turn my ink palette around so I make sure I grab the right color. And that's this one right here. And I'm going to give her a little something to stand on. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of walnut strain. And I'm going to start by putting it underneath of her shoe. And we want to make sure to go past your stick. And however far out here you want to go. And then I'm just going to lightly, my brush is running out of ink, so I'm just going to kind of spread that ink down this way and dilute it a little bit. And then if I want to later, I can come back and add another coat to that. So next, let's go work on her skin. And I've switched to my detail brush because her legs and her arms and face are really small. And so I don't want to be getting my ink all over the place. So I just switched to the smaller brush to make it easier. And I've tested this one on the back of my hand to make sure it's not too damp. And I'm going to color her skin. Because they're so small this time, I'm only going to use my tattered rose to color her. So I've grabbed a little bit of that onto my brush, and I'm going to add that where I want it to be darkest. So I want that to be darkest underneath of her skirt there, and I'm going to go down the front of this leg. And I've run out of ink, so I'm going to wipe my brush off. It's kind of damp. I give it too much of a squeeze. And I'm going to go in and just spread that out just a little bit. And then I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to come back and add another coat because that's way too light. Okay, and same thing for this side. I've grabbed a little bit more ink. And I'm going to go down the back side of this leg, all the way down here to her foot, get her toe. Oh, I better get that toe a little bit too. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to come back and I'm just going to spread that ink out the rest of the way on her foot and her leg. Okay, that's pretty good for our first coat. So let's go up here and we'll add some to her arms. So I've got a little bit on there. I'm going to go up the back side of her arm along the top of her dress and I've run out of ink so I'm going to grab just a little bit more. I've wiped, I dab my brush off and then grab more ink and then we're going to go down the back side of this arm and these fingers. And then I wipe my brush off and I'm going to come back with just water and spread that ink out onto the rest of her arm. Okay, that looks pretty good for a first coat. So let's go add our first coat to her face. And her face is kind of tipped down on this side, so I'm going to make this side the darkest. So I'm just going to add my ink on that side of her face and her ear. 
And then I'm going to wipe my brush off, and I'm going to come back with just water and use that ink I laid down to spread over to this side of her face. Alright, and then we'll let that dry. So let's go down here and add a second coat to our legs. So I've grabbed a little bit more ink, and we're going to go down the inside of this one. And my brush has ran out, so I'm going to go back up here and I'm just going to spread that out. Grab some more. Let's see. Let's add a little bit more to this foot and this foot. And I got a little bit on her shoe there, so I'm going to wipe that up. And add a little bit to each of these toes right here. This leg still doesn't look like it's got any ink on there, so I'm going to put a little bit more up there. Okay, I'm liking how pink those are. That looks pretty good. So let's go up here and add a little bit more to her arms. So grab a little bit of ink, come up here, add a little bit to these little skinny arms. Maybe a little dab on her neck there. And then wipe my brush off and come back and use just my water to spread that ink up onto the rest of her shoulders here. Let's add our second coat to our face. So again, I'm going to want it to be darker on this side, so I'm just going to go ahead and lay my ink down over here, and then wipe my brush off, and then use that ink to pull across her face to the other side. Just like that. Okay, and then we're going to give that a second to dry, and we're going to go and work on her hair. Okay, so for hair, we're going to use Vintage Photo and Walnut Stain. Oops, let's get a little bit closer here. And so I'm going to start with my Vintage Photo. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that on my brush. And I'm using the detail brush still. And I'm going to add just a little bit of that right here at the crook where her it looks like her little bun is coming down there and being attached. So I'm going to add a little bit right there. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off. And I'm going to use that little bit of ink I put down to spread down here into the bottom of her little buns. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to start over. So over here I'm going to do the same thing where it looks like it kind of rolls in close to her face and her head. I'm going to add a little bit of my ink and then I'm going to wipe off all that excess ink on my brush and then just use that little bit to spread it out towards the outside. That way it's darker towards her face and it lightens out as it comes out here. Okay, I'm going to grab some new ink and let's put a little bit on this side where it looks like it pulls down into her ponytail. I'm just going to use my ink to brush up towards the top there. Okay, and wipe your brush off. Grab a little bit more off the other side. Same thing on this side, right there where it comes down and it gathers into a little bun. And then use just that ink to pull up here towards her part. Okay, and I should have probably put a little bit of tattered rose in here in her part, so I'll do that when I come down here and do her cheeks. So let's go ahead and while that hair is drying, let's grab some worn lipstick for her cheek color. Open that palette up. Okay, and I made sure to dab my brush off so it doesn't have any of my vintage photo. And I'm going to grab a little bit of worn lipstick on the end of my brush. And we're going to give her some little rosy cheeks. So I'm going to go in here and just dab down a little bit of my red right there right there. And I think I'll grab just a little bit more for this side. Put a little bit more over here. Okay, and then I'm going to let that set for just a second. Let it, and then I'm going to grab a little bit of my tattered rose just to fill in this part right here. Because her hair doesn't look like it's touching right there, so I don't want it to be just white. Okay, so for her cheeks, I'm just going to go in with my water and just lightly dab on the edge of those cheeks just to soften them just a little bit. And if you collect a little bit of ink on your brush, you want to go ahead and wipe that off and then come back and dab some more. Okay, then we'll let that dry and I think I'll maybe add a second coat of my Tattered Rose to um, her face. But let's go up here and add um, another coat to her hair. So for the second coat on her hair, I'm going to use Walnut Stain. So 
So I'm going to grab a tiny dab of that on the end of my brush. And like I did with the first time, I want it to put it down where it's darker. So I'm going to do right here next to her face and where the bun would bunch up. And then my brush is pretty empty, so I'm going to go ahead and just use the little bit I have on there in the water to just kind of smooth that line and work it down here into the rest of the little bun. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other side. So I've wiped my brush off and I've grabbed new ink. Um, have a little bit more on this side, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe my brush off and then come in with just water and work that down until it kind of touches the bottom of her bun there. And then wipe your brush off. Grab a little bit more for the top. So same thing, we want to put a little bit down here in this crease. Wipe off any excess you have if you have a lot. And then work that ink up here onto her hair. And I picked up quite a bit, so I'm going to go ahead and squeeze or wipe my brush off a little bit more. And then come back and pull it up some more. And let's do the other side. So put a little bit down here in this crack. And then wipe your brush off and then come back and pull that ink towards the top where her part is. Okay, so I'm going to give that a second to dry and then we're going to go add um, a second coat of color to her face. Okay, so for her face, I'm going to add a little bit more of my tattered rose to her face. So I'm going to go along, I picked up a little bit of my tattered rose, and I'm going to add a little bit on this side. And then I'm going to wipe my excess off. I'm going to come back and pull that across her entire face and I want to make sure to get her cheeks because I'm just trying to even out those lines just a little bit on her cheek color. And she has a pretty small face so those little cheeks are pretty tiny. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So let's go down here and add a little bit of color. We're going to do her dress, but let's add a little bit of color to the stick so that can dry before we get up here. So for her stick, I did a little bit of my weathered wood. So I grabbed a little bit of weathered wood onto my brush and I just want to go down the back side. So I'm just going to add a little bit here along the back. And my brush ran out, so I'm going to just go ahead and wipe that off. And I'm going to come back and smooth that line out if there's a little bit of line over here onto the other side. And I went out the lines a little bit right there, so I'm going to wipe that up. And we're going to grab a little bit more. We're going to go down here and do the bottom half. So put a little bit along the edge. And it's pretty small, so you just want to have a little tiny dab on your brush. You could also, if you have um, the markers, this would be the perfect place for that. You would just use a little bit of your marker in there and then quickly go back and wipe on the marker just to soften it so it's not so dark. Because that was just, the whole idea of that was to just add a little bit of color to the stick. So let's go over here now and work on her dress. And for that, we are going to use shaded lilac. And I'm going to switch to my medium brush because that's quite a, quite a big area. And again, I would test it on the back of my hand to make sure that it's um, wet enough. And mine seems to be perfect. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my shaded lilac on the end of my brush. And I kind of wanted to keep it so that the middle of the dress wasn't so dark, but it was a little bit darker on the outsides and up here at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and just start on this side and put a little bit of my ink down and then come down here, clear down to the bottom. Okay, my brush is starting to run out. That's perfect, so I'm going to wipe it off. And I'm going to come back up here with just my water. And I want to soften that line. I'm just going to wipe it down along that line. And I'm going to go back up because I don't want to have this harsh line right here. I want to keep my line soft. So I want to keep that wet. If you let it dry, it's harder to, um, to spread around. Okay, that's pretty good for that side for a first coat. So I'm going to grab a little bit for my other side. So I've grabbed a little bit more of my shaded lilac. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn it so I can see it a little bit better. And we're going to go right down the edge of that dress. Clear down to the bottom here. And I don't have very much ink, so I'm going to go ahead and just get really close to that stick. Okay. And that's pretty close. So I'm going to wipe my brush off and then I'm going to come back 
with just my water. And again, we want to go down that line so it can't dry. Let's go all the way down and then I work my way back up so that I don't have a harsh line here in the middle. I want it to feather out into nothing. Okay, that looks pretty good for a first coat. So I'm going to leave that for a second and let it dry. So while that's drying, I'm going to grab my detail brush and I'm going to go up here and add a little bit of our shaded lilac to these little bows in her hair. So I'm just going to dab a little bit on those because I left those kind of light purple in the middle. So we'll just give those a little dab and that's perfect for that. And then we're going to go down here and we'll add a first coat to our shoes. So I'm going to put a little bit on her shoe. And then wipe off my excess and come back and spread that towards the top like that. And then I also want to do the bow, so I'm going to grab a little bit more ink. And I said that these were little ankle straps on here, so I went ahead and colored those. So I'm going to make it a little bit darker in there, and then I'm going to add a little bit to my little bow. And then if I have lots of extra, I'm going to wipe that off and come back and move that around inside the bow so that it can dry in there. So that's a pretty good first coat for her shoes. So let's go back here and work on her dress again. So I'm going to switch back to my medium brush because it's bigger, a bigger area, and it'll be a lot easier to work with. Oops, my ink palette's fallen off. Better squish that back up there. Okay, so I've grabbed a little bit of um, shaded lilac on my brush, and I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go up here at the top of the her dress, and I'm going to add a little bit of color, and I'm just going to work my way down along the bottom here, kind of pull it over a little bit more. Okay, that looks far enough for me, so I'm going to go wipe my brush off, and then I'm going to come back with just water, and we're going to spread that ink away from the edge and into the middle. We don't want that line to dry, so I'm going to go back up here quickly and go clear along the edge, and maybe spread down here a little bit. And if your brush is getting a little bit dry, give it a squeeze, and you'll know if it's dragging on the paper, or the ink's not moving around like you think it should be, now it may be a little bit dry and needs to be wetted up. Okay, that looks really nice. Okay, so let's go over here and do the same thing to the other side. So I grabbed a little bit more of our new sh our shaded lilac. And I'm going to start up here and I squeeze my brush and now it's really wet. Okay, I'm going to wipe that off. Got my ink all pulled up there because I gave it too much of a squeeze. But that's okay. We're going to use that to spread over here and we'll get right into the middle of the dress and it'll be the perfect light purple color. Alright, so we're going to let that to dry. It's really wet over here, so that's going to take a second. So while that's drying, let's go down here and I'm going to add another coat to her shoes. So I'm going to grab uh, my detail brush and some shaded lilac. I'm going to darken up this shoe down here just a little bit. Okay, I'm wipe my brush off and come back and spread that ink up here towards the top of her shoe. I think I'll actually do these little bands right here just a little bit darker, so I'm going to add another dab of ink in there. Okay, so my dress is still wet even though I went down there to color that, so I'm going to stop the video for a second and I'll be back when that's dry. Alright, so that took a minute. You can also take your heat gun and just blast it, but I'm in the video room, so I don't have that in here today. So, shaded lilac. I'm going to add another coat, because I think my sides of my dress should be still a little bit darker. So I'm liking the top up here, so I'm going to leave that. But I'm going to add a little bit more down here along this bottom. And I maybe will do... Let's pull it out here a little bit further. So let's bring our ink down here and actually dab it on a little bit thicker. And I wasn't worried about these little circles down here because I'm going to go in later and add some stickles over the top. Okay, so that's out there pretty far. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe my brush off and then I'm going to come back in and we're going to soften this line by just wiping the edge of your brush or your brush right over that edge and pulling it towards the middle. Like that. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with the other side. So I'm going to grab me some shaded lilac turn my picture so I can color it on a straight line. And I'm liking the top, so I'm going to go down here to the bottom and I'm going to spread that ink out a little bit further because I need it to be a little bit darker out here towards the edge. Maybe add a little bit more on that side. Okay, so I've added quite a bit on this side for a thick line. So I'm going to dab my brush off 
and then come back and smooth that edge of that line towards the middle and soften it up. All right, just like that, I'm liking that. We're gonna leave it just like that, and we're gonna go up here and we are going to conquer this lollipop. Okay, so for the lollipop, it's all one swirly thing in here. And to color it, you could do um, like a light, I colored mine tumble glass and chip sapphire. So you could go around and just kind of go around each little swirl and then leave it kind of white around half of it, white as you go around the swirl. You can also just do it so that it's darker blue down here and then it fades off into light blue up here. But I chose mine to be, to have some, to look like a, um, oh, heavens, one of those Christmas candy things. I don't know what they're called. Um, but I actually stamped mine. I recommend stamping it onto a piece of scratch paper first. So I've stamped just the lollipop on there and I took a pencil and I've added some swirls, some lines in here so that I could add color. And then I colored in each, every other one with my pencil just so I could see. And see, when I got over to this side, when I was going to color this one in, it was two, there was one right next to it. So I needed more swirls. So I actually needed to draw in one, two, three, four, five lines so that it would be an even amount all the way around and none of the colored circles would be touching it. And I just winged it. I took my Copic Multiliner. Let me get that picture back here. And I started my first swirl at this little dot right here where it comes down and it stops. So I didn't have anything special. I just took my pen and I set it down there and I went, this is going to be my first line. And then I kind of turned it a little bit, and I want it to go out a little bit, so I just turned it like that and added another line. And then you want it to go out a little bit further, so you're going to go over here further onto this middle part, and you're going to curve it around. And I kind of make my lines curve like that. So that's three. We need five. So let's go down here and add one right here. Four. And keep turning it around until you get to the other side. And five. So we know five is going to be a nice even amount um, going around in the circle there. Okay, so let's color that. Okay, so now that we've got our lines on there, and like I said, you can color your sucker however you want. That's just how I, I thought it looked really cute all swirled up there. So you're going to pick one to start with, and I chose this little section here to start my blue. So I'm going to start with Tumble Glass, and I'm going to color each one in with my blue. So I'm going to go in here, blue, and then I'm going to skip one, and I'm going to go down here and add blue. Okay, by then my paint's pretty diluted, so I'm going to go ahead and get a little closer there for you. Wipe my brush off, and I'm going to get new ink. So you want to skip one. So this one has a blue one, so let's do it this blue one. Okay, and my ink's getting diluted, so I'm going to wipe my brush off and get new. And we're just going to do that all the way around just to add our first coat. And this one's perfect because it's kind of up here, so I want it to be way lighter up there, so that'll be awesome that it's like that. And then we'll go same with these. If you want it to be darker, make sure to lay um, your ink down closest where you want to have your shadow first. Like this one, I'm going to say down here at this bottom part is going to be lighter. And let's do this side. And as long as we're coloring, let's go ahead and add our first coat to this little bow. As I made the bow blue. You could leave it white too if you wanted. Like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to let that dry so I can go in and add um, my second coat. But while that's drying, I'm going to get my trusty little piece of plastic. It's a piece of acetate that I've taped to a piece of white cardstock. And I'm going to mix my paint. So for my mixed colors, we're going to use chip sapphire and the tumble glass. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my chip sapphire on the end of my detail brush, and I'm just going to swirl it like this onto my piece of plastic. And that's probably more than I wanted, but that's what I'm going to start with. And then I'm going to grab some tumble glass, and I'm going to need more because I don't want it to be that dark. So I'm really going to wipe my brush in there. Look, I've covered it pretty much all the way up, and I'm just going to swirl that into my chip sapphire. 
And then I'm going to pounce my brush around a little bit just to get rid of some of that ink on there. Okay, and then I'm going to clean my brush off. And I'm going to use this mix paint to add to some some shadows to my lollipop, but I need to let that dry just another minute. All right, so I've let that dry for just a few seconds, a few minutes, and I'm going to go back and actually add another coat of my tumbled glass. Like on this one, it's pretty light, so I'm going to go ahead and go in there and just add a little bit more. And then I'm gonna just going to do that all the way around here again. It just depends on how light or how dark you want your sucker to. If you want your sucker to be um, that light, that's great. Just leave it like that and then you can add your mixed paint on top of that. I just want to darken mine up just a little bit more. Because I'm going to put um, some stickles and some glossy accents on here. And I was afraid that it would be um, too light and kind of suck up some of that color. So I want it to, to be a little bit brighter. some more to each of these just to make them a tad bit darker. We want to be able to see that blue. Okay, let's go ahead and add a little bit more to our little bow down here too. Give it a second coat to darken that up just a bit more. All right, so I gave that a couple minutes to dry. So now we're gonna go in and you're gonna get your mixed paint that we already mixed up. And I'm going to use that. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my mixed paint and I can tell already I better move it over here out of the way or else I'm gonna be dipping my arm in that. And I wanna add some shadows. So I want my lollipop to be darker on this side over here. So like this one, I'm going to put some darker down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to go in and just lightly soften that edge of that line. And then I'll grab new ink and I'm going to do the same thing for this side over here. So we want it to be darker over here. And then wipe my brush off and come back and just slightly dab that line. We're going to do that to all of the little blue circles. So let's do... Just a little bit up there. Helps if you get some on there. A little bit over here. Oops. And if you didn't think that was dark enough, you could go in too and just add a little dab more of your chip sapphire. It just depends on how much you got in there the first time. You're just gonna kind of have to practice, or if you have a piece of scratch um, paper, you could go ahead and Practice a little bit on a piece of scratch paper first and then come in and add your shadows. Okay, and then we'll go up here and add a little bit along this edge. Soften that out. Okay, and I think I'll add a little bit of this to my bow here too. Darken that up just a little bit more. want it to be a little bit darker, not quite so light. I'm going to have the lines there a little bit, so I'm going to squish that up with some water. Same right there. Okay, I'm liking that. So let's, um, oops, wrong way. So that is our cute little Claudia has a candy. And it also comes with this sentiment right here. Too. So I made sure to stamp that before I did all the coloring so that, and I used my Stampamajig so I could get it on there straight. Um, but that does come with your card this month. So let's put um, our card together. Okay, so we're going to start out. I've got my, I'm going to distress around the edge of my image. I've got my nonstick craft mat here, my girl. I've got some Rangers Distress Ink and Antique Linen. And I've got my trusty little um, sponge dauber thing. So I'm just going to go around the edge of my whole image. So I'm going to grab me some ink. 
and I always start my distressing by swirling out here on my mat and then working my way onto my image. That way I've used up a little bit of my ink before I get there and it doesn't leave a great big mark. So I'm just going to go all the way around. And you don't have to do this, you can just leave it um, the color of the paper. I just liked how it looked since I went around her with the antique linen that it would make the edges a little bit darker. Okay, and I think I'll do a little bit more over here, maybe. And it's all personal preference as to how much you put on or how little you put on. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to set all that stuff over here. Blow off my girl there. Okay, so let's see what we have in our little pile of stuff here. So we have ribbon on our card this time, so we definitely need to put a few things together before we attach it to the card base. So I'm going to set her over. Well, let's attach her to her card. So I've got her little craft piece of matting there, and we're going to put... I'm going to go ahead and put my adhesive on the back. We'll go ahead and just attach her to... Whoops. I'm doing too much wiggling on my tree bee tray here. Okay, like that. Okay, and I'm just going to set her over here on the side. And then next, I'm going to go ahead and attach this um, purple piece to my craft cardstock. I'm going to put on a little striped piece. So. And I'd say, hmm, I tried to make it even all the way around there on the side. So I just kind of winged it as to how much room I had up at the top and the bottom there. It's so like that. And then I have this great piece of craft that I've punched some hearts on each side and a little flower piece. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that to my little craft piece. And I'll put that right here in the middle. Like that. And then we can also go ahead and attach it right onto here. Do that. And, and it doesn't go all the way to the edge. It goes to the edge of the little purple piece. So I'm going to put that on there. And then next comes our ribbon. So I never make my ribbon go all the way around to the back. I always tape mine on and then make the bow. You can do it however you want. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this first. So I'm going to say that. The girl's going to be about right here. So I'm going to put a piece of tape just to hold it down there in the front. And then I'm going to oops, make sure it's straight. And I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to tape it down. And I'll grab another piece of tape. Make sure this side is straight. Flip it over. Tape it down. And then this can now be attached to our card front. I'm going to go ahead and just put some glue on here. And my trusty tape runner. And now is when you'll want to decide um, how you want your card to open. And I always have mine co open up from top to bottom. So if you want it to open to the side, you just want to take that into consideration before you stick your card front on there. Okay, like that. And then my girl here is going to need some pop dots. So I'm going to put some pop dots. And I think I use, these are the smaller ones that I use on the back of her. So these are like, good heavens, what are they? Let me look. See. Let me spin the little thing in the store. These are 1 and 16th inch pop dots. I'm sitting in the middle of the store to do my video. That's usually where I tape it. I only have limited space. 
So we're going to take this off like that. Okay, and then she is over here on this side, so let's go ahead and stick her down. And I put her in the middle of this little stripey piece, like that. And then I cheat. I go ahead and take some glue dots, and where my ribbon is, I'm going to grab me a glue dot. I kind of scrunch it up, and then I stick a glue dot in there to keep it scrunched. And I do the same thing for the top, so let me flip it around here. But it just kind of mushes it up right there so it looks like it's tied. And then I put a glue dot on the back of my bow. And I cheated, and I already tied my bow with my bow easy um, before I came in to do the video. Otherwise, it would take me forever. I have to fiddle with these things forever. So I'm just going to stick that right here. And if you haven't used your bow easy before, um, there is a tutorial on that on the on our YouTube station. So you just hunt down through the list. It was a while back, so it's but it's down there somewhere. Or I think there's also a playlist that has how tos, and that's included in one of the in the playlist there. Okay, and then you just trim your ribbon however far you want that, like so. Oops, pile that over here. So that is our card all put together, but let's go ahead and add um, some embellishments. And this month in your kit, I threw in a little sample bag of this Glamour Dust. So we're going to use that to add some sparkles to her dress. So I've got my quickie glue pin, and I'm just going to take my pin, and I'm just going to dot it onto my dress. And if you wanted, you could do these little dots down here on her dress instead of adding the stickles, which I think I'm just going to do this time, since I'm going to be dotting. Okay, and then I took, and I usually do all of this before I put the girl onto my card, but because for the video I wanted you to see it, I just went ahead and attached it. And you just dump your glitter on there, like so. And I use um, just a piece of white paper whoops, to dump it off on, so I'm just going to take my glitter off piece of paper, give it a little puff, and that adds the sparkles onto her dress. But I can also use this glitter later. I'll dump it back into the bottle here after I'm done. I don't know if you can see the little sparkles on her dress there, but that added some nice little sparkles. And then I took my stickles, pound it down here into the bottle because it's getting empty, and I added some stickles to let me see if I can zoom in better so maybe you can see those little sparkles better. I can't see it on the camera, but I'm hoping you can see the sparkles on her dress from where you're watching. So I'm going to add some stickles to her shoe. And you could do this too with your glitter pin if you wanted. I just chose to use the stickles down here. But I liked how the little dots on the dress made her look a little bit different. Okay, and then for this cute little lollipop way up here, I went and added stickles to each one of the, the white areas. That's why we didn't color it, because I was just going to go in and add my stickles. If you didn't want to add stickles, you could also just take um, some weathered wood and add some shadows in there just so that it had some color. I'm just going to take my stickles and do each one of these little white sections with some sparkly stickles. Like that. And that adds some nice little sparkles on there. And like I said, I do all of this before I even do put her on the card. And then, after I've got all that, all this dried, I went ahead and attached the whole thing to my card base. And then I took my Ranger Glossy Accents, and I can't put it on there now because the stickles are wet and it's going to take a while for that to dry. But I went over this whole thing, the whole lollipop with my Glossy Accents, and made it all one big shiny um, lollipop, even the stickled area, the whole thing. But that is our June 2013 watercoloring card kit. Um, Ava, or no, Claudia loves, Claudia has a candy. Sorry, I forgot what it was called. I did too many videos today. So thanks for joining me. I hope you had fun coloring with me today. If you have a question, just leave a comment. And if you'd like to see if this kit's available, just head over to the store. There's a link down in the description box. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.